There was this moment where everybody just started spitting up, throwing up. Now this is me being introduced to the spiritual realm. Uh, she has done some things as far as like putting a hex on you. And I'm like, what? Demons start like literally speaking out their name. All right, I'm finally reacting to this. This will be my first time watching it along with you. I've only seen clips on Instagram you guys have sent me. This is Cal Mitchell, who if you don't know is from Kenan and Cal. I grew up watching that. You probably did too if you're around my age. But this is the title of the, of the segment of the podcast we're watching, okay? Cal Mitchell's ex-wife put a hex curse on him. He had an exorcism and a demon spoke out of him. So he is on the secular podcast, huge podcast. It's Club Shay Shay. That's the name of the channel. I don't know who the guy is. I know you guys are going to grill me and be like, you don't know who that guy interviewing him is. I don't know. I'm a little bit out of touch with, uh, with pop culture and all that. But this is a super interesting clip. I'm watching this full for the first time, but I've seen just little clips here and there of it. But uh, yeah, I love hearing stuff like this discussed on these big podcasts. God is definitely using people like Kel Mitchell to speak forth the word. So let's watch this together and I'll pause it and react. I'll put the full clip in the description. If you want to go watch it without me pausing and talking, go do that. But this is a reaction video, so let's jump into it. Here we go. What was that? I want to say, man, my lowest. Just for context, the guy asked him how he became a Christian, how he found God. And I'm skipping like two minutes in, but... This is from the point of him asking, how'd you come to God? Because I remember I, I didn't even have a car at this point. I was, uh, you know, at an apartment. Uh, you know, I'm divorced. I'm just, you know, living my life. Nobody knows what's really going on, right? And I pitched this movie to Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, he wanted to do it. He wanted to direct it. He thought it was dope. So we started the process of the movie, uh, which is a fun movie, right? And uh, I met a friend of mine there, uh, Janice Woody, right? And she had an evangelist uh, that was like her spiritual mother. Uh, she said, I wanted to pray for you, pray with you, Kel. And I said, okay, cool, you know, let's, let's do that, you know? Um, and uh, she started to pray with me. I met uh, another evangelist in the same process, uh, a friend of mine named Chico, Chico Beniman, yeah, not Chico Beniman, uh, uh, Chico. He's an actor that was on uh, 101. Okay. Uh, so met up with him, his mom was evangelist. Remember, he got us all together one time to pray. And um, she was praying over everybody. It was me, Essence Atkins, a bunch of different other actors that were there. Um, when she started praying- Mind you, this is on a completely secular podcast. So he's saying what he's about to say. Over us, right? Uh, there was this moment where everybody just started spitting up, throwing up. Let me get deep with you real quick, okay? okay? So it was like a really like an exorcist type yeah. of moment, you know, uh, with everybody. And I walk into this situation where I'm like, hey, yo, what is really going, going on? on? What's going on? And, you know, now this process, I'm, I'm walking in. I'm, I'm, you know, dating the girl that I'm dating at that time. Uh, we all walk in there. And she notices, you know, uh, she goes, mom notices that. You know, I'm going through, you know, <laughs> some things. She said, come here. I said, okay. She said, you need to forgive. Now, this is him, how he got saved. So he got saved. And as you see, mass deliverance happening. People are coughing, throwing up, all that stuff. They're, go they're going through deliverance. I love how the host, who's, I don't know if he's a Christian or not, but he's just like casually like, oh, yeah. Like, that's normal. Some people. And you need to say that person's name out loud. And I know what you're going through within court and all the things you're going through. Hey, they let him through some deal with forgiveness before the deliverance. I like that. But you need to forgive that person and you need to say her name out loud. So I said, I've said my ex's name out loud and forgave her, and, you know, uh, and let go of that anger and forgave her. Right. She said also, too, uh, she has done some things as far as like putting a hex on you. These different things she has done mm. uh, spiritual wise. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yo, Man, what? Put the root on I'm, you? Like, I'm like, yo, what you talk about? Like, word, like, what, what? And she's like, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, I understood it, you know, within what was going on. Mm -hmm. When she told me that, now this is me being introduced to the spiritual realm, because we're mm. spirits. Right. And we're in the spiritual realm. And so when that happened, she said, I want you to say blood of Jesus. I want you to start saying blood of Jesus, and I'm going to pray over you. And she started to do that. I love how bold he is as well on this podcast, talking about, he's not watering it down. I think a lot of people go on these podcasts and they water down their experience or encounter, and I love how he's just being bold about it. Now, I'm, I'm spitting up, um, and within that process, um, getting reconnected to the Lord in a very spiritual way in this moment. Now, all my friends are here, some of my homies are here, and they're seeing me, and what is happening within this process, demons start, like, mm. literally speaking out their name. I'm saying their names out loud, but they're coming out of my body. This man is getting deliverance. Again, this is shocking to see on this podcast, 
him talking about like legitimate deliverance happening. Demon speaking out of him, he has no shame in talking about this. And then and then all his friends are around while this is happening. So each one is saying who they are. So imagine I'm watching. Now the host is like, uh. Watching this as this is happening to me. And they're literally going, I'm such and such, and my body would contort and be something totally different mm. as wow. this is talking and I'm spitting out. And as this is going on and I'm saying all this, I'm like, yo. And they all come out. Finally, I'm tired after like an hour of warring within the spirit. And everyone's speaking, as, she's speaking in tongues and me warring within the spirit. And after that happens, then I get up and my face, bro, like my face was totally clear. Mm. Like I'm talking like clear, clear. I went to the bathroom and I'm like, yo. And I just sat down and I was like. This is crazy because when I got my deliverance, I felt the same way. I ran to the bathroom, looked in the mirror and I had my countenance used to be very dark. I had dark circles around my eyes. That was gone. My face was completely clear, glowing. And I couldn't believe it. I looked in the mirror thinking, who is this? I lived so long. And like some of you, you've lived so long with demons on the inside of you that once you get free from them, you're like a completely different person because you're so used to those personalities living on the inside of you that once those personalities leave you, and remember Ephesians 6, demons are persons without a body that come and live inside of our body. Matthew 12, Jesus tells us that they look for their home. They call us their home and they're looking to dwell inside of us. So that's incredible when you go through deliverance, what he's describing, he dealt with the unforgiveness. He went through a full-blown deliverance. Now he just feels lighter after these things were speaking out of me. In my deliverance, the demons are speaking out of me as well. I feel that. It's like I just had a craziest workout. And at that moment, no one could tell me that there's there's not a God. Wow. Because I understood that this is spiritual warfare that we're dealing with. Then mm. I also understood that throughout Love every process boldness. between work and also through with relationships and toxic relationships and everything, that there's a real enemy that is warring for us. And I started to understand that it's not the person. Or the person that did it, you know, through in the workplace or the person that I was dealing with within my relationship, my ex-wife and all those different things. It was a real enemy that was after me and what I was doing because they knew what I would be for the Lord and what that process is. Because, you know, the Lord sees us from eternity. Mm -hmm. So he views you from eternity. So he knows what you were going to be or the powerhouse you're going to be for the Lord. You know what I mean? And what's going to happen. Yep. And so within that wow. happening within my life, That's so heavy. all these distractions that were going on was to stop me from being who I am within the Holy Spirit. And so when that happened, it wasn't like, now I'm just going, I'm going to preach. I didn't right. know that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just a thing of getting that off of me and understanding that just like we pray, you know, to the Lord, there's people that pray towards Satan as well. And that's just a real thing. And we got to understand that. And there's people that have generational curses within their family and all these Man, he's talking about generational curses. I mean, the man is going deep. I don't even need to pause it and really say much because he's he's straight preaching truth. Everything he's saying is true. Different things. And we broke that on that night, you know, which was beautiful. And um, we got to be careful who you lay down with. That's real process. Mm. You got to be careful who you lay down with. Because when you mix the spirits, that's what you do. Mm. You know, when you're having sex with people, you're bonding within that. That's when, when people break up and they might break up with somebody. But that Listen, I'm just saying, as my boy, as he's been watching some of my videos, he's talking soul ties. I mean, seriously, though, he knows what he's talking about here. Uh, now he's talking about soul ties, but he's just hitting everything. I, I know people said we, I should get him on the podcast. I would I would possibly invite him on to share his testimony because it is it is powerful. Person could still have a hold on him. Uh. Tell him something, you get that phone call and that heart and the stuff like because they're connected is a soul tie. Uh. So you got he just said it. And this is my first time watching this interview, guys. He just said soul ties. I'd be able to get that off of you, too. You might break up with somebody, but there can be soul ties. And you don't know what they're connected to as well. And shout out to Ruth Brown. Who, Shannon said just me to Ruth Brown. Um, within my praying process of that, too. And praying with me every day. I remember she used to tell me, after the club, I'm going to pray with you. You know what I mean? The bachelor's, you know, shout out to Ruth. She would pray with me after the club, pray with me all the time uh, throughout the process. And she was the one who told me about soul ties. And she mm -hmm. said, anybody you've ever laid down with, I want you to say, take my spirit out of them, say their name, and then take their spirit out of you and say that. Wow. And so if anybody's listening, they need to really do that. Because the thing about it is, is that you take all that to different relationships and you take that wherever you go. You have a, you, you have a homie here, you know, and you see the difference within them. It could be the spiritual connection that they have with someone right. that needs to be broken because it's a toxic, you know what I mean? Wow. And, and demonic when in that way. So uh, when I went through that process, 
And I understood that um, in doing that over, you know, years and learning the consistency mm -hmm. of that and learning how to pray, warring in within the spirit and the spiritual warfare of how to pray. And shout out to Ruth Brown for teaching me how to do that as well. Um, and just, you know, praying within that. That's when I saw like, OK, we are spirits and this is a spiritual realm. And when uh, I was asked to uh, preach, I think that was. <laughs> I'm telling you, if more celebrities got saved like that, got like radical where they got deliverance, all that in his salvation experience, they would stay Christian. He's been Christian for many years and hasn't gone back. But you see all these celebrities, like, for example, a Kanye West, and they don't go through deliverance and they you know, serve God. They say they're a Christian, all this. But then those demons don't get dealt with. They end up going right back. Those demons pull them right back to that lifestyle. So deliverance is so essential with some of these celebrities because um, they need to get that bondage. The question you asked me, right? <laughs> um, this was years later uh, after that decided to happen. But... Um, me preaching, I had now been working within the church. Um, when I had got all that off of me and I was being consistent with praying, I uh, stopped drinking, you know, uh, I stopped going to the clubs, <laughs> all these different things like that. I started doing that and I started just having- I love how he says I stopped drinking, going to the club and there's two huge, they're not his obviously, but huge, two huge bottles of alcohol right on the desk in front of him. Um, of course, he's not drinking them or advocating, but it's just the podcast host that has that set up. They're probably sponsored, but he's just so bold. I love the boldness because he's saying right there in front of this guy, like even though there's alcohol right in front of him, he's like, I don't drink, don't go to the club. I have a relationship with God. And I remember uh, the place that I was at, I had scripture all over the walls. And my dad used to call the place like the cave. You know what I mean? Because this was my place to <laughs> yeah, like right. be rebirthed. Right. You know what I mean? Within this, this process and uh, finding a relationship with God. Because right. that's really what it was about. And with me doing that uh, throughout the years, uh, the relationship that I was in at that time, we ended up breaking up mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to be celibate. And I said, yeah, uh, the, you know, Ruth said, yo, y'all need to be celibate. And then we realized in that relationship wow. uh, that we weren't compatible right. because we took the sex out of it. And when we took the sex out of it, it was yeah. just like, oh, dang, we really... Hey, don't <laughs> just, really have anything yeah, in common. yeah, we don't have anything in common, and I really understood the, the spiritual. I feel like the host is getting convicted right now. Miss of that, and uh, we ended up breaking up. And uh, you know, shout out to her; she's she's doing good. But uh, throughout that process, understanding that um, and figuring that out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to join club? Wow, that is so powerful. I was not expecting all that. I didn't even have much to say because he was just preaching fire. Talking about curses being broken, soul ties, deliverance, demons speaking out of him. The host was a little fidgety. I could tell, you know, he's probably getting convicted, maybe feeling a little something stirring up. But I love that bold testimony. I love that these things are being talked about on uh, big podcasts, like the biggest podcasts in the world. Our deliverance is being talked about. Freedom is being talked about. Jesus is being talked about. So it's a beautiful thing now to see people made aware of this. And especially as somebody growing up watching Kenan and Kel, to hear how far he's come, to see what God's done in his life. I'll definitely reach out and probably invite him on to share his testimony on, on my uh, Revival Lifestyle podcast, but I just think it's so powerful. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the story. Are you shocked by how bold he is? Let me know in the comments down below. We're live Monday night at 6, Tuesday night at 6, and Thursday at noon. And then make sure that you guys check out all my live videos because I have lots of hours of teaching the Bible. I taught two hours just this last Monday, two-hour message. You can check that on the live tab. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.